Are you tired of these rapid dashes and you want some smooth acceleration instead? It's us and in this tutorial, I'll teach you how to implement acceleration and deceleration in Godot. Here we are in Godot, and as usual, let's overview the project first. Here's a level, it's a node to the scene, and it has a player. Regarding files, we have the two scenes, the scripts, and also the art. Thanks to Jesse M for providing art for this tutorial. I left a link to him in the description. And in the project settings, in the input map, I have already set up the keys. As you can see, this system will work for top-down games. But overall, this system can be applied even to platformers. The main difference will be that you only work with the x-axis and you not apply the friction and acceleration to y-axis. For the player, the player has the get input direction method, the move method and some logic about movement. So let's test it. That's what we currently have. Just a usual character moving around with constant speed. Nothing special. So now, let's get to work. First of all, in order to implement acceleration and friction, we need to define two new variables. Acceleration and friction. They should always be lesser than the speed, because otherwise there is no point in having them. And also, I would say friction should be significantly bigger than acceleration, because this way it's logically correct. In real life, you would accelerate slower than you would stop, right? But at the end of the day, it's up to you which values to choose. Now we need two methods. Function accelerate in a certain direction, which will be vector2, and apply friction, which doesn't receive any arguments. And here we will change the velocity with just one line of code. We can use the move toward function of the vector2. The move toward method of vector2 receives two arguments. First is the vector to which we move toward, so that's the speed multiplied by direction, and the delta, which in this case is acceleration. And something very similar with friction. We still use the move toward function, but the target is vector to zero and the delta is friction. Now all we have to do is to implement these two methods in our physics process. And the only two lines of code that we will be changing are these, where we change the velocity. So for the first, where we move, we say accelerate in the input direction, and where we are idling, in other words, we are stopped, we use the apply friction method. And now, let's launch the game and test it. If you can notice that, it works. But to make it a little bit more obvious, I set the acceleration to 1 and the friction to 10. So here we are moving very slowly, but... And wow, when we stop, as you can see, it's a smooth... We, we are smoothly moving a little bit. And that's it for this tutorial. You can find a ton of examples of movement systems both with and without acceleration. And although acceleration and friction look cool, for certain kinds of games it's better to leave it out. Even if you take two games of the same genre, for instance platformer Sonic and Cowboy, you see that the first revolves around building momentum, while the other is about precision with no right to mistake. Once again, it all comes down to game design. And that's it. Thank you for watching, I hope that was helpful, like, share, subscribe. It was Ives and until next time.